Hi everybody, John. Listen, I'm going to start this video right here. This is where this battery started. And then it ran the lights all the way along at this level. And now it's just sitting there at the trigger voltage of these LEDs. So as you can see, the voltage is 2.22 volts. And it's continuing just out, and it will stay at that level. So, this converted lead-acid battery is far from being dead. And I'll show you that in just a minute when I come back. It's not going to run a 12-volt light. Okay? So it's just going to sit here and work in the crystal state. Which, by the way, all these little things in here little glitches and things like this are all little activities that are that are taking place in the crystal so I'll be back in a minute alright back again now as you can see this battery is not dead and it's working in the crystal state right now and you can see that from this oscillator right here because it's right across the battery and this can continue for a very 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 long time on this chart and this is running this oscillator right here is running at the 45 milliamp level so in the next portion I'm going to show you the mixture and how I mixed it up then we're going to put it in a battery we're going to form it and we're going to run a test on it here I'll be back okay. these are the chemicals this is a sodium silicate 40% electrical grade. This is sodium mass silicate nanohydrate number 9. You cannot buy this unless you're in a company. This you cannot buy either. Sodium mass silicate pentahydrate tech grade. Okay, number 5. These are hydrates with the designation 9 and 5. This is sulfuric acid. This is what you balance the uh, this with, alum. So, make no mistake that you don't know what the chemicals are. Because I'm going to take you over and show you something else now. Okay, this is how I mixed it. The precipitate is down at the bottom, which is the sulfuric acid crystals. And it locked up. So, all we do is this. And that will mix the solution. After it settles, you take this and put it in the battery. I'll do that. Alright, so anyway, here's a brand new battery. Never been opened. And this is what I'm going to be using. This says it's a 16 amp hour. But at the voltage levels, we're going to have to change the amp hour rating of these cells to work with this. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute when I come back. All right. Well, our mixer is continuing to run over there. I want to point out to you. See this? This is when the caps were off. And the little bubbles came out from charging. Then it settled on there. And this is the zeolite that it forms. This is what you're dealing with. Now, let me show you some other things. I'll be right back. It's not harmful here. It's not burning me. It's not doing anything. I'll be right back. Okay. Anyway, that's the crystal underneath the microscope. That's the zeolite it forms. And these little dark spots that you see in here is where it's got the sulfuric acid locked up. All right? Dealing with a totally different impedance here in the battery with this type of crystal. So it must be calculated out. And there it is under the microscope. Now, I'll show you something else. See this? This comes out of Bear River, Idaho. And it's zeolite. See it? This is the real metal. This is the real mineral. Excuse me. And that's what it looks like. It's green in color. It's not the same thing that you're making with these chemicals. So you can't put borax in here and get the same thing that I'm doing. It just doesn't work that way. 
at least not with what I'm developing. If you want to develop something else, then you go ahead and mix all the different chemicals that you want. I'm not going to say you can't do that, but I know better. Anyway, I wanted you to see that. That is the real mineral, mined out of a mine. That is not what you're making with a vegetable garden or anything like that. Forget it. So, I'll be back. I'll fill this battery. I'm going to show you something else. And we'll see here. All right. Took a while for this West Mountain charger to respond to this light here, this oscillator, with this battery that supposedly is dead, which is not. But you can see what it's doing. You can see that again, the crystal will seek the level, and it's over one volt. It's about 1.36 volts. I suspect that this can continue on for quite a while because the oscillator can run below the trigger voltage of the transistor. So I just wanted to point that out to you and make sure you have all the facts so you know what you're dealing with. Be back. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this solution settle out because we're done. And you can see that it's mixed up pretty good. And it's been sitting in here for days. So if the sulfuric acid was going to bother anything, it would have eaten the blades off this and leaked out. So I'll be back here in a second because I'm a one-handed man this time again. All right, I'm back. I filled this battery, and you can see no charge. The charge is off this battery. Look where the battery is standing when you get it balanced right. Okay, I don't suspect that it's going to stay there, though. It's not even formed yet. So, now I'm going to put the forming charge on it. And I'm going to adjust this to one ampere. Now, what should happen is that should go down and it should hang. But you must form this battery. And you can see the forming voltage is at 18.5. So that tells you right away there's a different impedance in this battery. So don't make any mistake about it. This is not a lead acid battery. This is a battery that's far different and it's going to do different things on the curves. So we'll let it form and I'll be back. All right, I'm going to point something out to you people. I want you to see this. Because in some cases you may have not been able to figure this out. Okay, this supply is in the voltage setting right now. And the supply is only capable at max here between these two terminals of about, it looks like 11, 12, 13 volts max. All right, now, you have to excuse me, I'm still one handed. Why is the battery sitting in, why is it showing 20.4 volts? What's going on? You know, I can turn the meter off. Put the meter back on. Let's see here. I got to get a voltage reading. So hold on a second. Okay, so I want to correct this because this meter lost its battery. And was showing you something that... You have to be very careful when you're doing these tests that the meter's battery is completely where it's supposed to be. So anyway, we're at zero volts here and this battery's standing at 10.25. So it's now in range of where this battery is going to operate. So now if we apply the one amp, we can see that we've got a pretty good impedance on this battery. And where it's probably going to top out it is 11.43, like the other Allen battery from the Korean War, which was the Willard. So we're going to let this form a little bit, and then I'm only going to give it a charge for a few, maybe about 20 minutes here, and then I'm going to pull a load from it, because I want to see where its impedance is. So I'll be back. 
Okay, anyway, here's the battery I did. That's 90 LEDs in super bright configuration. 1.6 amperes. And here's the curve. Right, so here it is. Impedance shift right here. This is the actual impedance. Now, actually, where this should be running is at exactly one half of this. So hold on a second. Okay, so there's the things. It turns out to be 11 ohms. Actually, 12 ohms. And you can see here is where I pulled it to. Then it recovered and jumped back up. And now you can see it's above. It's just going to... It's going to follow this line for a while until it does whatever it's going to do so we can watch the curve. But it's important to adjust the impedance on the battery. And that's basically how you do this. So I'm going to let it run out and I'll come back with an update on this where this battery is after a couple of days. Thanks for viewing.